This week, we will explore the privacy implications stemming from the dramatic growth in the number of sensors and other technologies embedded in physical objects and connected to the Internet and to each other, the so-called Internet of Things. There are currently more devices connected to the Internet than there are people in the world. The tech company Cisco predicts that 25 billion things will be connected to the Internet by 2015 and more than 50 billion by 2020. These so-called smart devices are becoming ubiquitous and permeate every aspect of our daily lives, from smartphones to wearable computers to implanted medical devices, to smart appliances, cars, and homes. Mountains and mountains of discrete data are being collected every minute of every day. The conveniences and financial and social benefits of connected devices are difficult to overstate. Smart devices will enable people to do things that they could not otherwise do, offer greater efficiencies, enable us to make smarter decisions, and may even save lives. Here are but a few examples of how connected devices can or soon will be enriching our lives. Sensors embedded in roadways will warn us of traffic congestion and suggest the best route to work as we drive in our connected automobile equipped with automatic collision avoidance technology and maybe even driving themselves. Smart appliances in our home begin working 30 minutes before we awaken so that hot coffee and an announcement from our refrigerator that we are low on milk awaits our arrival in the kitchen. While we are at work, our smart home automatically monitors outside weather conditions and lowers the shades to block the afternoon sun, adjusts the thermostats, runs the dishwasher during non-peak electricity usage times, activates the robot vacuum cleaner, and preheats the oven 15 minutes before our arrival home and automatically opens the garage door and unlocks the house when it senses we are near. Sensors in real time detect which parking spaces are already occupied and which are available. And through a mobile app on our phone, we can drive directly to an open space. Network sensors in airframes, automobiles, and other equipment continuously send information on wear and tear, allowing for proactive maintenance. Billboards and kiosks instantaneously change messages as we pass by to tailor a message to fit our consumer profile. A pill-shaped micro-camera traverses our digestive tract and transmits thousands of images to our doctor to pinpoint potential illnesses, while that pacemaker provides real-time data about our current health status and alerts emergency responders automatically if our heart stops. Embedded sensors in farm equipment will take into account crop conditions, the projected weather, and other environmental conditions and know whether to apply more or less water and fertilizer. And that chip embedded in our child's shoe tells us he got to school safely. And that remote camera in our infant's bedroom gives us the ability to remotely check on her. Concomitant with these immense benefits, however, are a host of concerns about privacy and security. After all, smart devices will be collecting unprecedented amounts of data and anything connected to the internet is capable of being hacked. The primary privacy concerns surround the following questions. Who owns the data? The collector of the data or the subject of the data? Companies or consumers? What is done with the data? May the data be used only for the specific purpose for which it was originally collected? Or may it be used by third parties for marketing or other purposes? Who may access the data and for what purposes? Certainly your doctor should access the data from that fitness band you always wear, but what about your insurer or your employer? Who has control over the collection and use of the data? Sometimes an individual may not be even aware data is being collected. 
How are the subjects of the data collection informed of the collection? How do they give consent or opt out? The usual privacy notices found in terms of use that we all do not read are not so applicable in many situations that use sensors, since we are not even aware that the information is being collected, and many connected devices lack a user interface where we could grant consent. Of course, the Internet of Things also potentially creates a far-reaching infrastructure of surveillance that would be the envy of even the NSA. As more and more data about our daily activities are being collected, it is possible to create a startlingly accurate profile of a person. How can privacy be safeguarded under these circumstances, you may ask? Well, some of the possible approaches to safeguarding privacy interests with connected devices include the following. Anonymizing data wherever possible and require assurances from recipients of the data that they will not attempt re-identification. Encrypting the data. Building privacy protections into the design of the devices from the outset. Limiting use of the data to the purpose for which it was collected absent express and informed consent and being transparent about the fact of collection and the purposes for collection. Another protection would be to allow users to access and delete data collected by devices. And finally, providing for appropriate oversight and accountability to help ensure compliance with accepted best practices. The security concerns with interconnected devices are equally as serious as the privacy concerns. For example, a team of scientists at the University of Washington remotely hacked into a driverless vehicle and took control of its braking and other systems. A hacked pacemaker could be turned off, or a hacked insulin pump could provide an overdose. The vulnerability of medical devices was highlighted on the TV show Homeland, where an elected official was assassinated by a remote hack to his pacemaker. Indeed, former Vice President Richard Cheney recently revealed that he had the wireless feature of his pacemaker disabled for this very reason. In the near future, we as a country will need to decide whether to address these privacy and security issues through self-regulation or through regulation imposed by the government. The Federal Trade Commission is in the midst of a study of both the privacy and security implications of the Internet of Things. It has already held several workshops with affected stakeholders and promises to issue a report sometime in 2014. In the meantime, there has been one enforcement action by the FTC involving a company that failed to provide sufficient security safeguards which allowed an internet-connected baby monitor camera to be hacked remotely. You can read about that in your readings. Several privacy experts argue that the existing privacy approaches are not workable when it comes to the Internet of Things. Review carefully the article by Christopher Wolf and Jules Polonetsky that is included in your readings. Come prepared to class to discuss whether the benefits of the Internet of Things outweigh the privacy and security risks, which is the question of the week.